Thank you, uh, everybody, for joining this uh, important seminar. And uh, uh, to the organizers uh, for giving me this uh, opportunity to present our work on beds in Southwest Nigeria. And uh, special thanks to go to uh, the Leventis Foundation for funding this project. So like you said, my name is Adewale Awoyemi, and uh, I'm a graduate of the prestigious AP Leventis Ornithological Research Institute, where I bagged my MSc in conservation biology. And just after that, I, I moved to the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, IITA, uh, uh, to, to support the Leventis funded project there. Uh, from 2015, uh, I was supervisor there, and then I took over as manager of the Forest Center of IITA uh, in 2018. So the work I will be presenting this uh, afternoon uh, is uh, basically what we've been doing since then. Uh, I mean, between 2018 uh, and now. So I hope uh, uh, I will be expecting your, your contributions and uh, uh, how we can make it better. So uh, as we probably all are aware that uh, Nigeria is uh, an ornithologically diverse country um, having lots of uh, different species of birds so far uh, based on the estimation of the African Bird Club, there are over 900 bird species that have been recorded in Nigeria. And that makes uh, Nigeria the seventh uh, uh, country, uh, seventh most ornithologically diverse country in Africa. So uh, it's highly ranked in terms of uh, the diversity of birds that uh, Af uh, Nigeria holds. And then in conservation, uh, because you don't have all the resources to conserve species, and then there are different categories of species, and that allow you to tailor your resources to maximize uh, profit or, or productivity. Uh, Nigeria initially typically had uh, about four typical endemic bird species, uh, about the Malimbe, Anambra was the just between the go-bed and the rock fire finch. But then three of them have now been found in other, other areas and now classified as near endemic uh, and some in other areas. These are very uh, important bird species that can be found in Nigeria. Now, this makes the Badamalimbe as probably the only typical endemic bird that we have in Nigeria because it's still within the shore of Nigeria, restricted to a small area in Southwest Nigeria. Uh, by endemism, for those that are not maybe biologists, I mean species that are restricted to a very small range and cannot be found in any other places across the world. So the Badamalimbe, it's uh, an endemic bird and is very rare, uh, is classified as endangered. So that uh, qualifies it as a, a globally threatened species. And this species is restricted to a small area in Southwest Nigeria. Now, because of the huge biodiversity, bird diversity that Nigeria has, uh, I would say the probably one of the most ambitious conservation efforts targeted at uh, conserving birds in Nigeria was uh, the identification and designation of uh, uh, sites for important bird and biodiversity areas, which is now metamorphosizing into key biodiversity areas. There are 27 recognized sites in Nigeria. 27 uh, important bird and biodiversity area, which is now known as the key biodiversity area. So I will be I will be referring to key biodiversity areas uh, in my presentation. Uh, this looks like a very good uh, uh, approach. I mean, to actually uh, attempt uh, aim that conserving Nigerian birds, but then Nigeria landmass is fixed. The total area of land that Nigeria has is just a little over uh, 900,000 square kilometers. And this remains fixed, except where you do land reclamation and there will be attendant problems, of course. But then in this fixed area of land, uh, the total human population of Nigeria uh, as at mid-2023 is over 220 million people. That translates to about 240 humans per square kilometers. That is huge. That means there's huge density of people in Nigeria. And remember, the land area is fixed. And then the population growth is estimated at over 2% two, 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 two percent per annum. So this population will increase by additional 2% in the, by next year. So there's uh, uh, 
uh, huge population growth, high density, but then the land area remains uh, the same, which means there is a uh, shrink in natural habitat because with uh, increasing people, you need uh, more resources in terms of food, you need more land to grow food that will support the population, you need uh, bigger cities, rural urban drift, and then rapidly expanding urbanization to support the growing population. And what that means is that the natural areas will be threatened due to disturbance. Now, uh, as I said, uh, this project is funded by the Leventis Foundation, and it also incorporates my PhD, uh, which I'm currently undertaking at the University of Granada in Spain. So for the first chapter of my PhD, we conducted a systematic literature review to know the status of urban ecology in Africa. And you will see here, unarguably, Nigeria is highly urbanized, perhaps the most urbanized country in the entire African continent. And that has implication for biodiversity. Now, like I said, it's very ambitious, the 27 KBAs that have been identified in Nigeria. There are 27 of them, great ideas. But then if you sum up, they vary in their sizes as well. Some are quite small, some are big. But then if you add up all the areas of the sites, the 27 sites, they merely account for 3% of the total land mass of Nigeria. That is very small. The total areas that have been designated as key biodiversity area to protect birds, to conserve biodiversity, account for 3%. That is very low relative to the size of the country. And that has implication for biodiversity. So. Uh, we are talking about Southwest Nigeria uh, now. So what are we doing actually to promote bird conservation in Southwest Nigeria? And why is, this, is the Southwest Nigeria very important? Like I said, initially there were typically four endemic birds, two in the north, one, two in the south. Uh, the Anambra was B, Ibadamalimbe, just the two in the Gobe, and Rock Fire Pinch. But then this one, the remaining three are expanding their ranges. So they are more or less near endemic. So the Ibadamalimbe is the only typically endemic bird uh, that we have in Nigeria now. And then uh, it's restricted to a small area in Southwest Nigeria. So the, the Southwest Nigeria is very key in terms of uh, ornithologically speaking. Now, like I said, the Badamalimbe is uh, found in this area, and that's why the Southwest Nigeria is very, is very, is very key uh, for bird conservation. You could see this uh, male. This is the male Badamalimbe. You could see the red uh, in terms of identification extending to the breast area, lacking red on the vents in the area, and then this is the female. A photo which I took. So uh, our efforts uh, in Southwest Nigeria is restricted to the uh, RITA Forest Reserve. For, uh, please. Uh, in Southwest Nigeria, uh, there are two KBAs that have been recognized. The RITA Forest Reserve, which is quite small, and the Omo Forest Reserve. Uh, the Omo Forest Reserve is bigger than the ISA Forest Reserve, but then it's really threatened uh, due to illegal exploitation, excess, excessive exploitation. The ISA Forest Reserve is quite protected, and it's mainly the site that is conserved for the Badamalimbe because it's a positive site for this species. So what are we actually doing in Southwest Nigeria to conserve birds? Now, we do quarterly bird monitoring. I will talk more about that later. We do environmental education. We have the Baden Bed Club, uh, which is uh, arguably the best bed club in Africa. The club meets uh, uh, at regular interval on the last Saturday of every month uh, to visit different areas within the city of Baden to look at beds, to promote uh, bed conservation, to raise awareness. We also have school conservation clubs as part of this Leventis funded project, which is also funding my PhD. As part of the project, we also do forest restoration. We do all of this in the IITA Forest Reserve, which is a KBA. Remember, uh, the IITA Forest Reserve is a KBA. And then the, in the course of this work, we identify a particular site that is very important for bed conservation, uh, Emira Forest Reserve, which I tag is it's the next KBA to be designated in Nigeria. I will talk more about that. Now, like I said, our work is restricted to Southwest Nigeria. And in Southwest Nigeria, we are typically doing this uh, conservation efforts targeted at beds in two forest patches. Uh, the RITA Ibadan campus, which is about 1,000 hectares of land. This is the RITA campus, this entire area. 
and you could say the IIT forest itself, which is a KBA, this area is the 360 hectares, which is conserved uh, uh, for, for the Badamalembe and other trigger species, which I will talk about later. So we are also doing the monitoring in the Emirate Forest Reserve. This is the Emirate Forest Reserve, which is about 30 kilometers from the IIT Forest Reserve and is a very small area of 120 hectares, but then ornithologically diverse. Now, when are we actually doing our monitoring? Uh, because uh, of uh, uh, seasonal variation in the tropics, we have two main seasons, the dry and the wet season. And each influences associated bird diversity that you have. There are some birds that you record more in the dry season than in the wet season. For instance, in the dry season, we have some uh, migratory birds visiting from Europe, the Paleartic migrant, like the tree pipits. We also have within Africa, birds moving uh, within even within Nigeria, which we term the intra-African migrants, they move from the north, which is savanna, to the west, which is more of a rainforest. So they move within this area. So with our survey, uh, targeted at both the dry and wet season quarterly, which is March, June, September, and December. So March and December monitoring captures the dry season, June and September monitoring captures uh, the wet season. So we are able to look at uh, the totality of the efifauna that is found in these particular areas. So how do we actually do our monitoring to make it a, it's a quite robust system, uh, which we tag as the constant effort survey. Uh, with constant effort survey, I mean, we do uh, the same thing, the same time, the same way. So for instance, with our mixed netting, we set up nets to trap birds in natural habitats. We use the same size of length, in terms of length, in terms of height, in terms of mesh size. For the same number of days, we, 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 we miss net birds for three consecutive days in each of IIT and Heminat Forest itself. And that's why we refer to it as constant effort survey. So in March this year, for three consecutive days, we monitor birds in IIT and Heminat Forest itself. And we've been doing that since 2018. So it is constant. We also do line, line transit where we walk along trails to record bears. We do point counts. We also do focal observation, which is very important. For instance, for the Badamalimbe, which is very rare. Whenever you see the Badamalimbe, you just want to go back there to maximize the opportunity to take as much data as you can. Uh, and, and for that, focal observation is more suitable. And then we also do collaboration. We collaborate with uh, different organizations, uh, typically the AP Leventis Ornithological Research Institute, where I graduated for my master's degree. We also do environmental education, uh, which I talked about through the Badenberg Club and School Conservation Club. We train students in internship uh, from the Leventis uh, School in JOS, uh, from different uh, universities in Nigeria, even outside Nigeria, and my PhD study. But then because of my time, I will not talk about this, Maybe in subsequent time, one of my colleagues, uh, maybe Ademola or Kunle, can talk about what we've been doing about the Baden Bed Club, about the School Conservation Club, which is very interesting and has produced remarkable results. So when we record the beds, I mean, for the mixed netting now, we set up the nets and we put ring in the atasos so that we can tell if we trap that individual again, which we refer to as retrap. And with that, we can estimate different indices like survival rate, like recruitment rate. So we identify the birds using the feed guides. We take movimentary parameters, tassels length, we take the mass, the wing length. And for my PhD, we also do ecophysiological study. We collect samples for laboratory analysis. We raise awareness, all of this. So I won't talk about this. I'll just focus on the, on the monitoring. Now our outcomes and uh, outputs. Now, uh, because of uh, the ornithological importance of the IITA the campus, uh, there have been lots of work that have been done. I would say there are three generations of data sets that I would like to talk about and refer to so that I can compare and contrast. Uh, the first was uh, led by the work that designated the site uh, by Zealo as KBA in 2001. So this particular uh, study focused on the species that are restricted to the guinea Congo forest biome. So they are, you know, in conservation, you don't have the resources to, to, to do everything. So you have to prioritize. So this particular uh, study or particular effort focus on the trigger species that are restricted to that kind of forest. If you don't have that kind of forest, then you don't have the species. So Ezeala reported 67 trigger species, biome restricted species 
within the IIT uh, uh, forest in, as of 2021. So another very ambitious work was led by Hadi between 2009 and 2013. So although this work focused on the IIT forest uh, uh, reserve, which is a KBA, it expanded to the Ibadan areas to know uh, how many species can be found around the Ibadan. This particular study, very nice, detected about 400 different species of birds that have been found in the Ibadan area and has been published in the journal Malimbos, as you could see here. Now, uh, Adenia, you found that uh, the, the IIT campus hosts about 269 species. That means the IIT campus account or holds about 70% of bird species that can be found in the Ibadan area, in the entire Ibadan area. This is very nice and very important because, like I said, in conservation, you have to prioritize. You, you, you don't have the resources to do everything. So if in Ibadan, uh, you have a site that can accommodate about 70% of the species that can be found in the Ibadan area, then you have to put in conservation effort in that area. Because if you protect that site, then it means you are conserving 70, about 70% 70 genetic diversity of birds that you have in that area. That is a very good one, and it's a lot of achievement. And Adenia also detected about 137 species of these birds are as forest birds that, that are in the IIT forest reserve. But then out of uh, uh, the 67 Guinea species recorded by Zealo, Adenyanju did not find 12 of them. So that is some sort of reduction. Now I said to the generation of data set, Zealo, Adenyanju. Now, if we now compare Adenyanju data to our current data between 2018 and 2023, you see that uh, there is a gentle increase in the, in, the, in, the, in the number of species that we have found uh, with about six, uh, individuals added, which is very fine because uh, you see with increasing urbanization, the IIT forest reserve or the campus itself is more or less like an island now. So it's a source population. So species that are more or less threatened in other areas now, they now see the campus as a refuge. So they come to the campus and uh, uh, which is a little bit protected. That's why we have that kind of influx because uh, the six species that are added are not specialists. They are generally species that you could find in other areas that are, if you have little disturb disturbance there, then you could come to a place that is safer. Now, when we say Genocogolia species, before you, a species can be classified as uh, uh, biome restricted, then it means 70% of its range must be in that area. So 70% of the range of these species are found in this area. And that's why they are termed Genocogolia species. Uh, there are 84 of them now based on a study uh, by Ade Yanju. But then he didn't record uh, 12 that is yellow reported, making it 72 Guinea Congolia species that can be found in the IIT forest reserve. Initially 67, now 72. The 72 that Ade Yanju recorded, we have we confirm it in the current data, also telling us the stability of the IIT forest reserve and the need to actually uh, continue to protect it. Now, for species that uh, uh, Adenyadu did not record, we recorded 25 of them. But between 2009 and 2013, the Adenyadu contorted this work. He didn't record them, but now we recorded them. But I will not tag these species as gained, as gained species for the site because they were recorded earlier. So it might be uh, maybe due to some disturbance or maybe uh, some efforts that we have detected these species. What is important is that these species are not lost and we have recorded them again. Now, perhaps the one of the most recorded, uh, the most uh, remarkable sources we've recorded regarding this Leventis project uh, is the identification of the Heminat Forest Reserve. Now, remember I said the forest is small relative to the IIT forest itself, which is about 120 hectares. In this forest, we have recorded 128 bird species, 128 bird species. And out of this 128 bird species, 58 of them are Guinea Congolian bird species. They are restricted to the Guinea Congo forest belt. So that means about almost half of the bird species that are found in this forest reserve are trigger species, are very important species. That is very fine. In Nigeria, there are a total of 187 Guinea Congolian bear species in Nigeria. Remember, out of them, we say IITR 72. Now, if you look at 58 against 87, it means this forest that we just detected 
uh, owes about 31% of the guinea Congolian bird species that have been reported for Nigeria. This is very nice. This proportion is even better than that of the IIT forest itself. Now, if you compare here, yeah, IIT forest itself is 360 hectares, supporting 67 or 72 guinea Congolian species. Emerald forest itself is 120 hectares, supporting 58 guinea Congolian species. This does not uh, diminish the value of IIT, but also supporting that uh, there is a potential side that will also enhance uh, uh, the ornithological importance of Southwest Nigeria. Remember, of the 27 KBAs that have been identified in Nigeria, just two are in the southwest Nigeria. And the southwest is very important now because of the typically endemic bird, the endemic and endangered Ibadamalimbe. Now, we have reported our findings in the Emira Forest Reserve uh, in the Bulletin of the African Bird Club. Interestingly, the only available song of the Ibadamalimbe has been recorded in the Emira Forest Reserve. That is the only song of the Ibadamalimbe uh, that is available. Uh, we have also reported this in, in Malimbos. This is very important because uh, part of the threats to the Ibadamalimbe is lack of data. And our, our efforts, conservation efforts, have uh, provided, uh, have filled this important knowledge gap. In fact, the data used by the inter, uh, IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature, for assessment of species, especially for the Ibadamalimbe, come from our efforts at the IIT Forest Center. So the data that IUCN uses to rate the Ibadamalimbe is from us. So our, our efforts have provided such data. Now we have provided uh, where it could be found and decide as well as the only available song, which is now deposited in the Cornell Library in the USA. Now, uh, this is the IIT Forest Reserve. This is Omo Forest Reserve. This is the third site that is we have, I mean, based on our, based on fact, based on our data, that we think this site qualified to be a KBA based on the, uh, the species, the huge biodiversity it holds. So we are proposing as part of our efforts uh, that this site, the Emira Forest itself, be designated as a KBA in Nigeria. And in 2000, and last year, August, we submitted the form to the KBA Secretariat through BedLife International. You know, the Nigeria Conservation Foundation is the Bird Life International partner in Nigeria. So we have submitted this uh, uh, proposal and we are following up their back and forth to provide uh, some data which we have provided. We think that it qualifies and if designated, that would be a very good source of this uh, uh, conservation uh, efforts that, that we are implementing in Southwest Nigeria. This is uh, just to show you uh, uh, the recording of the Ibadamalimbe in both the IITA and Emira Forest Reserve. You see, the sighting of Ibadamalimbe is even more prominent in the Emira Forest Reserve compared to the IITA Forest Reserve. And like I said, remember, the IITA Forest Reserve is mainly the conservation site that is available for the conservation of the Ibadamalimbe. There are other forest patches where the Ibadamalimbe could be found, but then these forest patches are community owned and then they are disappearing due to uh, all these factors I've talked about in terms of uh, all sustainable farming practices, in terms of urbanization and the rest of them. Most of the forests where the Badamalimbe could be found are, are gone. So the IIT forest itself is the only protected one. And IIT forest itself is more or less becoming an island now because of uh, the rapidly expanding city of Ibadan. So if we are able to get the Emira Forest itself as another site for uh, to be designated for the conservation of this bird, another 57 K uh, uh, trigger species, that would be very nice. Another additional work we have done as part of this project uh, on the Ibadamalimbe is that the only uh, successful breeding record of the Ibadamalimbe, we found it, we recorded it, we followed it. This is the May by the Malimbe. I'm happy to, to, to be the one to photograph this photo. I already filmed it and put it in my house. You can see it was feeding the baby with uh, with, cheese, with uh, caterpillars here. We really monitored it from incubation to fledging. We published this work as well, which is a very um, uh, remarkable source from our conservation effort in Southwest Nigeria. And you could see in this map where the Bada Malimbe has been found. Uh, uh, in uh, all of these forest patches. So we recorded this in the Kitty State. Now, just to summarize, uh, uh, because of my, my time, to summarize uh, the app, because remember I said we do this uh, uh, through the constant effort survey. 
And then I'm very interested in ringing data because it is actual data, because you already trapped the bed, you have the bed in your hand, there were a lot of data you collected, so you could make a lot of inference from it. Now, between 2018 and 2022, we recorded over 1,005 individuals of birds of 49 species. And unsurprisingly, uh, the IIT Forest Reserve recorded more, of, although because of the size, about 61% of the birds we recorded were found within the IIT Forest Reserve compared to the Emerald Forest Reserve. Uh, interestingly, 5% of this total number of individuals were juveniles. Uh, that tells us a little bit about recruitment rates that uh, there's reproduction, which is, which is fine. 5% is quite low. We may think that ah, 5%, maybe the population is not doing so fine. But then there are two measures of uh, uh, breeding evidence that we use. The number of juveniles, I mean, the number of baby birds. And then uh, as experts, we also uh, detect breeding evidence from brood patches. You know birds, unlike mammals or other, other species, they incubate, I, I mean, they incubate their eggs. So why incubating the church, the feathers around the belly so that they can easily pass the heat from the body to the egg so that the egg can hatch. With that, scientists, I mean, biologists know that this particular bird is breeding. Uh, if the bird is breeding, then uh, that, is a, that is an evidence of reproduction. So that is 11% of the total birds that we recorded were actually with brood patches. So if you had 5%, plus 11%, that's about 16%. That tells us a, a good recruitment rate. So 16% recruitment rate, we could say that, okay, the population is doing fine if about 16% uh, evidence is available to show that reproduction is actually fine. And then if we look at the retraps, the total uh, percentage, about 21% of this total number of individuals uh, trap were actually retraps, which means we trap them earlier. Remember, I said when we trap birds, we put ring so that when we trap it again, then we can say, okay, we trap this particular individual here and we can compare their body condition, maybe their mass, every so many data that we can actually uh, uh, co collect. This rate trap is very, very important, especially for conservation decisions because it tells us about survival rates. It means 21% of the total number of birds that we have uh, misnetted in these two forest patches have survived. So it means survival rate is potentially 21% of the total number of pairs that we have recorded. This is very nice. I mean, this is a very good uh, indication of survival. And it tells us about the health of the forest reserve. For instance, if the forest patches were not fine or are threatened by, by different factors, maybe persecution, the best don't feel safe there, then we expect that we won't have a uh, retrap. If the habitat is destroyed, there are no birds, or the birds are being killed, or the habitat being destroyed. So this is very good and saying uh, already pinpointing, uh, I mean, justifying the conservation effort that we put into what we do. And you could see here that uh, the Emirate Forest Reserve and IIT Forest Reserve, they follow the same trend. We recorded more of adults, then retrap, then juvenile, which is also very nice. This is uh, when FIO visited the uh, IITA to support our ringing effort. Uh, he was holding the capuchin babbler here. Uh, it's a lovely bird here uh, as well, the blue shoulder robin chat. So we, we collaborate, uh, like I said, uh, with uh, different organizations to, uh, to ensure this. Now, if you look at the temporal trend, I would say the population of birds within the IIT and Emira Forest Reserve is quite stable. So I will call it a rather stable population uh, because not so increasing, but it's stable. Uh, this outlier here, this sharp increase is due to our collaboration with, strong collaboration with Aplori. In 2019, we had lots of people from uh, Aplori visiting. And when experts visit the ring and we take all our data, we keep all our records. That's why we have this outlier here. But then if you control for that, then this population is stable, telling us that both IIT and MLA Forest itself are stable. And then if we protect them, then there, there is need, uh, I mean, there, there, there is value for the conservation effort we put into, into place. Like I said, we collaborate a lot with the AP Leventis Ornithological Research Institute. That's where I graduated from. And then lots of uh, scientists, and we are both funded by the same donor. And you will see uh, the number of beds, those that are affiliated with Aplori, they have ranged more beds than those that are not affiliated with Aplori here. 
ringing over 80 uh, bears. I mean, 80 percent of bears that we have ringed so far between in, in, in both RIT and Emerald Forest. And then, if you look at the number of ringers, those that have ringed it, you find out that they are also more affiliated with uh, with Aploli, with some of these fantastic uh, species that that we have recorded. So, what are those challenges, and uh, what are the future prospects? Uh, funding is always challenging for any conservation work, and then. Uh, for instance, to get more equipment. And then uh, we do other activities as, uh, in addition to bed monitoring because we have a whole center, the forest center uh, at RIT that does other conservation work, uh, forest restoration and the rest of them. Although there are also other uh, security issues, you know, uh, in Nigeria, it's, it's an issue, but then we try to rely on tips from the RIT security unit so that to ensure that staff are safe because we also train students and we take them on field work and, and the rest of things. So we have to rely on this uh, important aspect. And now uh, we, we will be so excited if we get uh, uh, the Emerald Forest Reserve be designated as a KBH. But then that would, that would mean we have uh, just three KBA in Southwest Nigeria with the Badamalembe, which is globally threatened. That is still small. Even if we had the Emerald Forest Reserve to the 27 KBAs, it will still account for le less than 4% of the total land mass of Nigeria, but it is still something for conservation efforts. Uh, I could remember there was a time uh, we planted the Badamalembe grove in our tree heritage park, and then Phil was also visiting and assisted in the planting. And uh, that was around 2018, 2017. And somebody was asking, ah, so we planted the trees that the Badamalembe love in, in the grove. Uh, in, I mean, our intention was to raise awareness when students visit, okay, uh, Ibadamalembe loves this tree. And somebody was mentioning, ah, when will these trees grow that the Ibadamalembe can use it? I said, okay, this is mainly for environmental education, but if you visit the place now, what we have is reminiscence of forest in those five years. So a conservation effort actually work if you put in, although it takes time, if you put in the effort. So we are proposing an ornithological monitoring at the Olokimeji Forest Reserve now, so that uh, uh, we could already, we have the Emerald Forest Reserve, we have OMA, we have IIT. The Olokimeji Forest Reserve is very interesting because it's quite big, it's about 6,000 hectares that are six times bigger than the size of the IIT campus. So uh, we got funding from the World Resources Institute, Nigerian Bureaus, to restore 1,000 hectares in this forest reserve. This forest reserve is about 40 kilometers from the IIT forest reserve and almost 50, 60 kilometers from the Emerald Forest Reserve. You know, this network, if we are able to do it, that would be very good for, for bed. But then the project we are implementing at Olokimeji is mainly to restore the habitat. So the biodiversity monitoring component is what we are proposing to the Leventis Foundation for the next round of funding. Uh, and fees here so that we can get the support to do this. Now, our intention is that, okay, we are doing forest restoration at Olokimeji Forest Reserve, but then uh, we want to introduce the Leventis project there so that we do bed monitoring so that we can use the bed monitoring to match our effort. So with that, we can measure if our uh, forest restoration efforts is actually positively associated with bird species richness. We expect that as we restore the Olokimeji forest reserve with native tree species, then the bird biodiversity should increase. And then with this proposal to the Leventis Foundation, we are not only looking at the taxonomic diversity, I mean, in terms of the number of bird species alone, we are looking at the functional diversity so that we see how conservation effort actually influences functional role the functional diversity of birds. We also look at phylogenetic diversity to look at evolutionary richness from conservation perspective. So we want to take it to another level and we'll be grateful for this year, uh, if uh, we have the funding to, to keep doing this. And this will be very good for birds in Southwest Nigeria, uh, uh, having presence in RIT, uh, Hemera Forest Reserve, and also at Olokimeji Forest Reserve. There's some sort of delay with the KBA designation, but then we are still on it. Uh, people from Bed Life Castle. So if we could speed this up, this would be very nice. Um, I don't see it as actually doing FIFA to the Emirate Forest staff or doing FIFA to the IIT Forest Center staff. But then if we do this, it will encourage the owner. The Emirate Forest staff is a private forest that is owned by initial enthusiasts. This 
particular designation will really increase its interest and it will really like it. And like I said, we are not doing FIFO, but then if we do it, then the best there, the biodiversity there are what uh, will be benefiting from this uh, effort. So if we could get this, that would be very nice. Uh, it's a success story. So we also attempt to have more publications in conservation journals, in reputable journals. Then we hope to boost staff morale through better welfare and training. I will tell you more about uh, the team. Uh, this is who we are, the RIT Forest Center. I'm the manager of the center. You could visit our site to learn more about our work. This is the team. Uh, the team is a remarkable team. Uh, I would like to thank them. Uh, working with them has been very fine, very productive team. And then uh, it's very good. I'm happy to work with them. And our project, two of my supervisors now, now based on uh, uh, with support from this project, uh, just recently gained their MSc, and hopefully they can also go for their PhD. And hopefully one of them can talk about uh, our effort on the Ibadan Bed Club, School Conservation Club. The other one can talk about our restoration activities uh, uh, to focus on another aspect. And this is my supervisor, Ide Kopa Limbo. He's been very supportive of our work because, you know, uh, IITA is an agricultural research institute, and you have the forest center that is uh, a domicile with uh, biodiversity monitoring conservation within an agricultural research institute. Research institute, you know, it's not so easy. But with our support and the staff, uh, we have recorded remarkable successes with better recognition now at IITA. Uh, in this particular event, uh, smoking is we went for team building. Uh, organize, I mean, with uh, our facilitators from the human resources and our team. So energizing for greater productivity, I say to my team, we should keep up the good work. I think uh, there is success story here, and then uh, we have achieved, and we should we should keep it up. Uh, I will I would really like to thank the Leventis Foundation, which has been the bedrock of funding for the for the IIT Forest Center. It didn't start in 2015, even when I joined as supervisor. It's been there for many years and has been supported by the Leventis Foundation. So I would like to thank them for, for, for their unwavering support. Also, the AP Leventis Ornithological Research Institute, we have a very strong partnership with them, uh, which has really enhanced our, our performance. The Nigeria Conservation Foundation, and like I said, IITA for hosting us. Uh, this particular Hunter Franklin also recorded within the IITA campus. We found it, it was incubating. So we monitored the breeding, which was the first to be reported for, for this species for Nigeria. So we reported it as well in the journal. We, we monitored it from incubation until it hatched and then it fledged. Uh, it's a lovely, lovely bird. It's also a trigger species. So with it, I would like to end my talk uh, and thank you all for listening. Euh, merci beaucoup à Adewale pour euh, sa présentation, c'était très clair et très complet. Euh, Adewale euh, nous a présenté les projets de monitoring au sud-ouest du Nigeria. Euh, il, vient de... donc, il travaille pour euh, l'Université de Grenade et le Centre pour euh, la Foresterie et l'Institut Tropical International d'Agriculture du Nigeria. Euh, il nous a expliqué qu'il y a euh, 920 espèces d'oiseaux au Nigeria, donc c'est le septième pays le plus divers d'Afrique euh, pour la vie faune. Euh, il y a euh, un seul endémique strict dans le pays, c'est le Malimbe d'Ibadan, qui est présent dans la région du sud-ouest, et euh, deux espèces semi-endémiques, donc l'astril du Niger et le Kombasu du Joss. Euh, il y a en plus plusieurs espèces à distribution restreinte qui se trouvent dans le pays. Euh, 27 sites de haute biodiversité ont été définis au Nigeria. Euh, c'est un pays avec une surface de près d'un million de kilomètres carrés, euh, une très forte densité d'habitants, plus de 200 millions d'habitants. La densité est plus élevée, par exemple, que ce qu'on peut retrouver en, en Suisse. Euh, il y a aussi une forte croissance, donc une forte pression sur les habitats naturels. Et donc, c'est nécessaire de travailler pour la conservation des oiseaux et de leur habitat. Et c'est ce que nous a présenté Adewale, donc pour le sud-ouest du Nigeria. Euh, un de leurs principaux sites d'études, c'est le campus euh, euh, IITA d'Ibadan, qui fait plus de 1000 hectares, dont euh, 360 hectares sont protégés et dédiés à la conservation du Malibé d'Ibadan. Euh, il y a aussi une, forêt, une réserve forestière qui s'appelle Emerald Forest Reserve, euh, qui fait environ 120 hectares, donc c'est une toute petite surface, mais avec une grande diversité et une grande importance pour l'avifaune. Euh, des suivis ont été réalisés euh, sous la forme de Constant Effort Sites, donc de suivi de population euh, par le bagage, mais aussi par l'observation avec des, des transects et des ressourcements 
Euh, il y a aussi une grosse composante d'éducation à l'environnement, de stage et de formation. Euh, ils ont aussi organisé des, des programmes doctoraux, par exemple. Ensuite, euh, on a eu une présentation des, des résultats. D'abord, pour les résultats de, de 2009 à 2013, donc... Euh, il faut savoir que dans la région d'Ibadan, il y a presque 400 espèces d'oiseaux. Ça fait une grande diversité. Et 269 espèces, donc plus de deux tiers de ces oiseaux se retrouvent sur le campus, dont 137 espèces forestières. 84 espèces guinéo-congolaises ont été recensées. Donc c'était plus que lors d'un recensement qui avait déjà été effectué en 2001, même si certaines n'ont pas été retrouvées. Et ensuite, il nous a présenté les résultats plus récents de 2018 à 2023, euh, lors desquelles 275 espèces ont été trouvées sur le campus. Il y a eu une augmentation et, et donc euh, on peut soupçonner que, que cette zone sert de refuge pour des oiseaux qui sont menacés ailleurs. Euh, il y a encore euh, 72 espèces guinéo-congolaises qui ont été retrouvées dans cette période. Et ensuite, euh, Adewale nous a aussi parlé des, des, euh, de l'Emerald Forest Reserve, dont euh, la Près de la moitié des espèces, en fait, sont des espèces guinéo-congolaises typiques de cette région. Donc, cette forêt est importante pour la conservation de la vie faune dans la région. Et c'est là aussi que le seul enregistrement du Malibé d'Ibadan a été réalisé. Euh, il y a généralement un manque de données sur cette espèce. On voit qu'il n'y a même pas une photo sur eBird encore. Euh, les, les données de ce suivi peuvent être utilisées pour évaluer le statut d'espèce menacée comme le, le Malibé. Il y a eu par exemple aussi le premier cas de reproduction avec succès documenté. On a vu, on a vu aussi une belle photo. Ensuite, euh, Adewale nous a présenté un petit peu les résultats du bagage avec les proportions de, de juvénile de 2018 à 2022. Donc 5% de juvénile. Euh, J'imagine que c'est des, des oiseaux qui viennent de s'envoler. Donc ça veut dire qu'il y a une, une bonne reproduction et que l'habitat est de bonne, capturée, euh, bonne qualité si on se réfère aux oiseaux capturés. Il y a eu beaucoup de, de collaboration avec la Plori, dont beaucoup d'aide pour le, pour le bagage. Et les défis futurs du projet sont le financement, euh, certaines limitations au niveau de la, de la sécurité. Donc les, les prochaines étapes, c'est un nouveau projet de, de monitoring, la désignation euh, de la zone comme euh, valeur à haute biodiversité qui est en retard, euh, des publications dans des journaux scientifiques et des améliorations des conditions pour le staff pour augmenter leur motivation et, et d'autres projets de recherche. Euh, merci beaucoup encore à Dewale et à, à tous nos, nos euh, spectateurs francophones et je vous souhaite un bon week-end et une bonne soirée.